Good morning and welcome back to Plan Adult History. Today we are going to discuss what if the deep sea race happened instead of the space race. The oceans are still a mystery to most of humanity and the deepest part of the ocean which is closer to us than the moon, it has been visited by less humans than the moon actually. Sure, there were only seven more people on the moon than in the so-called Challenger Deep, but it put things into perspectives, such as priorities and also technology for instance. While we have rockets and a great understanding of space, this only happened because of the space race. And the ocean, after the decline of the Portuguese, Spanish and last but not least the British Empire, started to become less interesting. With the development of planes and the use of them for passengers and cargo transportation, the sea has largely become obsolete. Sure, there are here and there some diplomatic problems between countries, but this is mostly due to supposed resources, and these resources aren't that deep. We don't even exactly know what we can find in the bottom of all the oceans. There is this common sentence that we just know barely, like 1 or 2 percent, but I have no any means to verify whether this sentence is true or not. Life has also been found in many areas, with high pressure, toxic and volcanic activities, even in the so-called deepest part of the world. Nowadays, when we talk about the sea and the oceans, we are not thinking so much about resources or about countries fighting for certain claims. We are rather thinking about ecological problems, but even then it doesn't come so much to our minds. And the only problems that we think about is the plastic, of course, in there, and sometimes the overfishing. But we don't know whether we actually overfish very deep in the ocean, because we have no clue what is in the deepest parts of the ocean. And then we also have the catastrophes, such as oil leaking from tankers, but this doesn't necessarily have an impact on the deeper part of the sea, it has a more indirect impact. Some parts of the oceans, they saw a rise in importance due to strategic reasons. Let's take China for instance. China claims certain small islands, the Spratly Islands. But then again, are these islands or are these just reefs and banks which just happen to be above the sea level? The US of course tried in our timeline to respond to Chinese claims by sending more units and support in and around the South China Sea. But what if all of that changed? What if the deep sea race happens? A plausible point of divergence is that the Soviets would not invest in satellites or barely invest in satellites, but they would search for more resources around in the sea. They would develop technologies that would allow them to extract resources such as oil for instance, gas and precious metals from very deep parts. They would of course start with the Black Sea, but then they would also go in other areas such as for instance the Arctic Sea. And then also maybe the Pacific Ocean. Of course we can now argue and say that this is what exactly happened, that people actually made technologies that allowed them to go into the North Sea, for instance. And yes, it's actually true. But then again, these places in the North Sea, they aren't that deep at all. Let's say that someone like Khrushchev, who was really crazy about corn, he would then get crazy about sea exploration. And not just for resource purposes, but also in order to map out the seafloor and open new lines of communications, maybe, that the US couldn't understand or predict. The US being the US with their spies, they would find out about such a program and then they would allocate a lot of research into oceanography. With that in mind, we will get the following consequences on the long run. 
Satellites in general would have been developed much later. We wouldn't have a GPS as we know, but a very different one or a delayed GPS system. No satellite telecommunication, no weather satellites, no spy satellites, and no mapping research satellites. There would be a fewer telescopes which could study the stars, the planets and space in general. We won't have manned space programs in that alternate timeline, no humans on the moon and no robots on Mars, etc. Our understanding of space would be very little to almost non-existent. And related subjects such as physics, especially theoretical physics for instance, they would focus on more different theories than the creation of the universe, for instance. Many misconceptions about the moon, asteroids and the stars, they could still be very strong, actually. As for the oceans, the oceans could at first serve as a playground for science. Many failed experiments will happen and thus the oceans and the ecosystem would suffer more than it did in OTL, especially in and around the 50s and the 60s. However, this doesn't mean that it would stay like this. And we will come back to this tiny part later on. At some point, geopolitics will become part of the deep sea race. This would happen around a time where the oceans could be mapped and where technology would be invented to find more and more resources. These resources, however, wouldn't just be on the front door to the US and the Navy, which already was impressive, impressive would become much bigger. Portugal had the Azores and Madeira, and while these territories are not impressive, the sea area belonging to Portugal is very large. I don't believe that the international sea zones, they will suddenly become abolished in this ATL, because if one of the claims could just happen to become true, then all our claims will also start to come true and we'll get the snowball effect. It could be a can of worms and the US and USSR in the Security Council of the UN would out veto each other and the USSR would not just try to support Cuba with weapons and missiles but they could also send specialists to explore the maritime world of Cuba's sea area and maybe place even weapons under the sea. However, I'm pretty sure the US wouldn't just let it happen and they would confront the USSR or start doing the same thing around Greece and Turkey in the Black Sea, for instance. But the Black Sea could then in return become not only a testing ground of the USSR, but we could see peaceful missions arising in there. Sometimes during the Cold War, both blocs had peaceful exchanges during, during the space race. So I believe that having a deep sea race, we could see fields like underwater archaeology dramatically improving, especially in places such as the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. We could maybe know much more about the Minoans, we could maybe know more about Greek colonies, we could have an understanding how trade flows which have happened in the Black Sea and then in the Mediterranean, and maybe even find out some more interesting facts about Carthage. All of the Pacific would be the testing ground of the US, so I imagine that while the US would claim as much as they could, the Soviets, they would take a different approach later on. They would try to improve the technologies used to dig deeper, technologies about mapping, and how to work with data that they got from all of this analysis. A similar technology to the GPS could perhaps evolve, only that it would be based in the ocean floors and maybe it would send signals based on water movings. It is possible that less money would be allocated for the research of the ocean, but I believe that it wouldn't matter as, first of all, nobody would be able to win such a deep sea race, and second of all, the problems of the Soviet Union were not due to the space race, but mostly for other reasons the Soviet Union would collapse pretty much as it did in OTL. But one specific consequence of this alternate timeline would be that the Middle East, especially countries such as Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, etc., they wouldn't be that wealthy. And also we wouldn't see so many interventions in the Middle East, such as Iraq, for instance. 
perhaps only Britain would be there to defend Kuwait, or maybe nothing at all. Deep sea oil rigs, they would be massively improved upon, being one of the main beneficiaries of that race. And I also think there would be a greater harnessing of geothermal energy than in OGL. The US and many more countries around the world would not depend on the Arab oil, while these countries, they could also have deep sea oil rigs to get oil, but they wouldn't be as rich as they are in our timeline. They would perhaps become more something akin to Venezuela, somewhat stable with few social programs, but not filthy rich as they are now. And if I mention Venezuela, I mean before Chavez. At the end, we could have a greater knowledge of how the ocean works, better technology related to oceans, ocean mining, deep ocean oil rigs. For the first few years or decades, the maritime life would take a hit. But with the rise of anti-nuclear movements, and this is the point that I wanted to mention, we could see the movement also branch out and promote cleaner oceans way earlier or more efficiently than in OTL because people would be more aware about what is in the oceans and what's actually going on in there. We would understand more how the animals work in there, we would understand also how the ocean is affecting us on land, and we would also see anyways like mining operations or oil operations in there and people they would understand that this isn't necessarily good, at least for the ocean. The US would benefit from it, because they would be independent and the biggest oil producer way earlier than in OTL. Countries around the Black Sea, Mediterranean and also archaeology could have a more cultural benefit of it. And many technologies which I can predict, maybe technologies that deal with high pressure for instance, they could be improved upon. And that's where we leave it for now. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum. forum.planetalthistory.ga Until next time on Planet Alt History.